see when I go to work, can't see when I get off. How do you expect a man not to get lost? Every year I just keep getting deeper in debt. If there's a happy day, Lord, I haven't seen one yet. Take him away, take him away, Lord. Take away these chains from me. My heart is broken cause my spirit's not free. Lord, take away these chains from me. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> and if you didn't listen to the first two episodes, welcome for the first time. <laughs> and go back to those, and then you'll come back, and the welcome back will be apt of your return. <laughs> We've mastered time <laughs> yes. here. That is what happens when you are speaking into something which is timeless. <laughs> like the internet, which is a strange thing. It's it's sort of timeless. I know it is weird. But, but I mean, what is there a day like like you're online? Is there such a thing as time online? It's very strange. Um, but it does, it does weird things to your time too. Where all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, "What have I done for the past two hours?" Yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. And usually yeah. the answer is nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, the Old Crow Medicine <coughs> Show. The Old Crow Medicine Show. And uh, I used to play harmonica in, in a band. Uh, um, it wasn't a very, very great band. Uh, but we played. We you played, played Old Crow? We played some Old Crow Medicine Show. Um, but I, I, I enjoy them greatly. I actually stole that album. Not from a, not from a store. <laughs> <laughs> copied it <laughs> but we don't have to go into that <laughs> okay speaking of, of of being what you do speaking of <laughs> speaking of having your character <laughs> determined by your action <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing so, there you go um <laughs> okay so uh some of you some of you wrote some some questions to me uh some 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 of you have had, had also sent um uh Questions via uh, Skype, and I, I don't I don't use Skype very often, except when I'm forced to do distance education or <laughs> talk to my my parents. Um, so in Florida, in Florida, so this is kind of expanding my Skype usage. Um, but that was that was hopefully helpful for you. Uh, it was helpful for me to at least know that people are thinking about what we're talking about, which is I was sort of conf conf um, confirming that we're not actually just wasting our time here. Uh, so I want to begin um, maybe by going back a little bit to the last reading because we, we didn't talk about something that I thought was really important. Um, and that was the, the discussion on page 36 between um, these different uh, um, Sort of dynamisms, these these different yearnings, so to speak, of man. Man has these these two different movements of himself. He he sort of and, and by movements I mean like like what is he what is he striving to do? Like your existence is striving to do something, just as the existence of a carbon atom is striving to do something. Now the carbon atoms don't know what they're striving for, but they're still in some sense striving to repel I don't know, someone out there saying Dr. Jagger, you're so stupid. You're never going to get this. <laughs> yeah, but what, whatever, it, whatever it is. Attract oxygen. Attract oxygen. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Unless oxygen attracts carbon. No, no, no. no. That's, that's, <laughs> they, they, they attract each other under certain conditions. Co-attractors. Co-attractors. <laughs> kind of like a matchmaker. Kind of like guys and girls. <laughs> um, so whatever it, is, whatever it is carbon atom is striving to do, um, right? You can, you can say it's sort of it's, it's – Carbon is dynamic in that sense. It's sort of m moving, not not necessarily physically moving, but it's it's engaged in activity for a certain end. And now humans are like that because, well, all things are like that. That's just what it is to be, as we saw last time. It's sort of this mm -hmm. dynamic um, movement, yearning for something, for the reception and the communication. Um, and and here we we passed over this a little bit, but I want I wanted to, to dwell a bit more. On, on these two points on, on 36 because I think they're incredibly important. Uh, the, the first is that the human, I'll just, I'll just read this, the human will, as the soul's faculty of action flowing from its intellectual nature, is also a spiritual faculty like the intellect. 
and precisely because, as spirit, it is necessarily oriented towards nothing less than the infinite good as its only adequate fulfillment. No finite good can command its adherence by necessity. Okay, uh, and he goes on to say, and it remains free to choose its own path toward the infinite among all finite goods, even to turn away on the conscious level from its own authentic good towards other apparent goods. So the, the human is, is this bizarre uh, uh, creature in that the, the human, in virtue of having the will, the, the free will specifically, is necess in some ways necessarily oriented toward the infinite good, which is God, uh, and, and yet at the same time is capable of making a choice as to how it will attain that good. So the, the carbon atom doesn't get any choice on how it's going to attain the types of, of, of um, compounds it's going to enter into. Is it going to, mm -hmm. is it going to uh, compound with, with uh, other carbon and, and oxygen and what other things they enter into with? It doesn't get any choice in how that's going to happen. It's just purely its activity is is sort of um, a result of its external environment. But yet it's still itself. It's still the carbon which is doing the activity. But the actions that it's doing is, is always determined by the, 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 the exterior can, situation. Can I ask a quick question on that? Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean that carbon is, um, by its very nature, being always perfectly itself? Uh, yeah, well, perfectly itself intrinsically. Yeah. Um, but but it could, it, it like like, it, it could actually <clears throat> fail at at certain level. Like it could it can fail to be um, good carbon. Good carbon. By what? By external things affecting it. So by it, by it being united with oxygen. So, so you, well, I so, don't want to so get move, too far move, on this. Move, I mean, think about think about like a tree. Like a, like an oak tree, right? Yeah. Or an acorn or something, right? So an acorn, to be an acorn is just to be sort of disposed, directed, to yearn, to to to, to become an oak, to grow and to develop. That's kind of built into the the oak the, is the in genetic a sense the perfected structure acorn. of it. Right, the oak is the perfected acorn, and what an acorn is is you don't really understand what an acorn is until you understand its role in the the life. Of a, the of a tree, the oakening of the acorn, <laughs> as it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So, um, but there are things that can prevent the acorn from oakening, yeah. from becoming an oak tree, mm -hmm. and and some of that could be um, external. It, it just doesn't get planted. It doesn't get sun. It doesn't get water. But but the you. carbon isn't isn't carbonating. Like it's it's just carbon. Right. And Even if it does attract certain things, it, is it perfected by its union with those things? I, I, well, I mean, maybe. I mean, if, it, if it's, yeah, I mean, I don't um, I mean, I, I mean I, this, this could, this we, could we, us, we don't have to go way down this us, road. This could get us down a rabbit hole. I'm just very uh, inter interested in non uh, non-living material they, substances that, and what their perfection is. Yeah, and I, I, I think uh what is the? I mean, here's why it's hard to talk about the perfection of a carbon because it's unclear what the end of a carbon atom is. Where it's yeah, kind of, I would think it's it easier would be, to understand yeah. what the end of an, an acorn is. Sure, it's harder to understand what is the end of a carbon atom. Um, and now that that there's a there's a, I'm sure there's a great um, number of people out there that would say, you're dumb. It, <laughs> it doesn't have an end. It doesn't have a, a purpose. Yeah. Um, but I I. I but that I, I don't think that it could be a nature. I don't think it could be if it didn't yeah, have an end. Right, right. right. But maybe there, its and, end is just and, to be itself. I don't know. And, and it's going to also be tied up with the notion. So the notion of a law, natural laws, laws of nature, right? So the, there's there's biological laws, which are are really descriptions of the ways that natures behave. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's laws about how these things behave and those things behave and, and what have you. And now there's chemical laws uh, and physical laws, which are descriptions of how um, chemical um, elements behave mm -hmm. and how, you know, the, the physical particles behave. Um, but it's not like those laws are like making the, right. the carbon 
or making the electron do what it what it what it does. It's rather this is just what it is to be an electron. The 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 electron makes itself act do this, this because that's yeah. just what an electron is, right? Yeah. Uh, so so the, sort of the laws are built into the mere nature of a thing. This is why um, you could talk about laws of nature are rooted in the natures of things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and I, I think it's – you can talk about perfection of, of, an, of an individual in terms of whether or not it, it is living or existing – in, in conformity or correspondence with its quote unquote law, with its, with its nature, with it, which would be, say with, with its nature, yeah. And it's easy to make those evalu evaluations for. I mean, easier. Nothing's easy in life. <laughs> it's easier to make. You should those learn evaluations. this now, Quinn. Yeah, kids. yeah, yeah. That's the. There's one thing you should learn is that it's really hard to learn. Uh, um, uh, and and so and it's interesting how most schools are trying to tell you that's not the case. So. You heard it from me first. <laughs> Anarchy University. You, you have t tenure, right? Yes. Just, just making sure. That's okay. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it, so it's easy to make those evaluations when it comes to, like, macroscopic things mm -hmm. because it's easier to see what those natures are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's harder to make those evaluations when it comes to things like carbon and electron mm -hmm. and even things like quarks because what the hell – yeah, are those because I mean, like if they're if they're things. First and, of all, and part of it, part of what's in question is it's hard to know what as you get more fundamental, what types of of activities those those entities can actually engage in, mm -hmm. um, because uh, um, we just it's hard to observe that stuff. Yeah, and most of the observations, see. most of the observations, they're not actually empirical observations; they're mathematical calculated observations. And right. so there's this interesting question about. Do we actually come to know the the, the fundamental particles of physics uh, in the same way that we come to know other things? And if and if not, then you you might wonder when we talk about the nature of a particle, we're equivocating uh, when we're as to when we're talking about the nature of say um, a acorn. human or an acorn or what have you. So it's like a in, in a sense, physics is, is is more philosophy than it is science. Yeah, it's right. And, and, and read read conjecture. Read Werner Heisenberg yeah, or Einstein or Schrodinger. Yeah. Uh, I mean they they'll they'll tell you that that really what what Your we're doing is we'll tell you that. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Anyway, so, sorry. Sorry about the digression. But, but anyway, <laughs> so so you have you have these these sort of inner yearnings, inner strivings. One is the will to to sort of be necessitated to 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 choose to, to recognize that there's one infinite good which will which will fulfill it, mm -hmm. um, and yet it's capable of choosing um, the the I don't know if you want to call it the means or the path that it will come to by which it will come to that to that good, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's something unique about the human being is that not all human beings live out the same you know life that can be characterized in the same sort of way. So the way that I'm living my life towards the, the, the infinite good is very different from the way um, uh, Mother Teresa was, you know, living her life mm -hmm. in, in, in pursuit of the infinite good and very different from the way that, um, you know, fill in the blank. Right. Uh, but w what, you, what you see is they're, they're all still characterized as the same type of, entity the same type of thing human they're all human because of the fact that they have chosen for themselves determined themselves in virtue of this freedom to this this end so it's not it's what what unites it's the same them all. end it's the same end it's the same end. And, it, and in some sense it's the same means it's the same but it's the same means only understood in this much more fundamental way of free means it's mm -hmm. the free activity of the individual to attain its ultimate end that makes all these different lives capable of being all brought together as the same type of creature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a human being. Mm -hmm. um, and and this this I mean this could come, this one might come up later, but um, people I think often conceive of their their relation to God as one where God has the playbook, but the only problem is 
you you don't get to, to peek at, at the playbook. Yeah. And here's what God wants you to do with your life, and yet you don't know it. And you're like, oh, God, please, just tell me. Dog leg left. Yeah. And then go straight Yeah, on come out. on. What should I do? <laughs> how should I play this out, man? Just give me, you know, throw me a bone. I don't know how to... I don't know how to be happy. And what, what he's saying is, no, I've given you the means by mm-hmm. which to be happy. Mm-hmm. You have it. You have the playbook. The playbook is one in which you have to write yourself. Yeah. I've given you the end. The end is me. The end is the, 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 the necessity. You don't get to pick that. Yeah. The necessity to good. But you get to sort of write your own playbook as to how your life will unfold. Uh, and a lot of people don't like that. Um, for various reasons. One, it might be because... Freedom's hard. Freedom's hard. <laughs> you, you, you now recognize what, what Clark says in, in the, the reading for today. Uh, there's a responsibility in this. Yeah. It is now up to me whether I screw my life up. The I would, buck stops here. I would much it. rather it be that God screws my life up. Yeah. And, oh, I didn't have any say. That, the cards were just sort of against me, but I'll just go along with it. Yeah. But, uh, but when you recognize, no, it is, it's sort of in your hands. You have this freedom to orchestrate uh your life um according to some sense your design you don't know the the end isn't your design Mm -hmm. um people people don't like that they freeze because they realize i can really mess this up and if anyone's ever tried to do anything you realize yeah you can mess it up yeah like whatever it is it could be fixing a car it could be it could be reading a book could be trying to wake up early. Could be trying to upload a stinking lecture onto YouTube. Upload <laughs> things to YouTube, and Which really like, I failed at miserably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, so I think we we realize um, that we have this freedom, which means we are aware that we can screw this up. Which don't think of. It, I mean, that's the, that's sort of the negative side. But right. but that what that means is then you now have the ability to excel at um, attaining the end. Right? There's a sort of possession of yourself that you have. In being able to make yourself present to the infinite good, mm-hmm. which is a, which is a, a gift that carbon atoms and trees don't have. Yeah, and, and to make and it's it's up to you how you make the infinite good present to beings. Right, right, um, right. Because that's in a sense, in a sense, it's just a flip side of the same thing. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So, so you have you have that that idea of the infinite um, sort of dynamism of the will, the will sort of striving out desiring infinite goodness right and that that i think is what he's saying is um you don't you don't someone says what do you want in life and you say i just want to get through the day i want to rock <laughs> yeah i want to rock no no no, no sorry okay, okay. <laughs> i was just asking for it okay it was. um <laughs> um i i just want to get through the day now hopefully that's not the only thing you want in life because then you know, come, come, you know, 12, 12 the next morning. Uh, yeah. Life's pursuits are accomplished and you're, you're <laughs> final you're, and achieved, final and achieved, <laughs> you know, hang, hang up the hat, throw in the towel. It's over. You did it. You, you, you've peaked human existence here. You're still breathing. At you're 12. St- yeah. Yeah. But that means there's no need to continue breathing because you've already achieved it. That's right. right. That's so right. I think what we realize is, um, when we aspire to goods like a job, or when we aspire to goods like um, learning through online media, uh, <laughs> we, we, we realize that um, those are just means by which we attain greater goods. Mm-hmm. So, so we, 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 we I, I think upon, upon inquiry, um, why, do you, why do you care to get a degree? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, mm-hmm. if you've taken ethics classes, I'm sure you've heard, you've heard this before. But you want to get a college degree. Well, for, for many of you, um, it's it's you know so that you can you know be more marketable in the in the workplace. Some of you want to, to get a, a a college education so that you can actually get an education. You can learn. Uh, but even going for some more mundane, you want to get a job, and you want to get a job because you think that's going to be helpful for living a good life, providing for your sustenance or the sustenance of your family, um, and 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 all that is sort of pushing to higher and higher goods. Uh, and then the question to be asked is, what's the ultimate good? What's mm-hmm. what's really sought for? Um, and if you've never asked the question, what's the ultimate good? What's the real reason I do any activity? Then that means your entire chain of activity, your entire life is meaningless. Yeah, it uh, all leads to nothing. It all leads to nothing, right? Now, hopefully you realize it's leading to something. I just don't know what that is. That's a really good recognition. Um, there's There's one ultimate good 
for which my whole life is a pursuit. Uh, if you have that recognition, good. Go uh, for it. Go for it. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Keep great. Keep it up. But the, 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 the problem is many people don't even think that that's an important question to ask. And, and that, that's what a lot of postmoderns mean by um, the absurdity of being, is that mm-hmm. most people, and, and they want to say actually all people, are acting for goods that ultimately have no reason. There's no, there's no grounding for it. There's, it just sort of goes on and on and on and on. It's either infinite. There's no ultimate reason for why you're doing anything. Um, uh, or, or it turns out that each of the activities that you do, you don't really know why you're doing them. There's no real reason for why you're doing them. And so um, life becomes meaningless. So, so really the question of the meaning the, 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 the meaningfulness or the meaninglessness of human existence is, is requires what Clark says in that one paragraph. This is a really important, super important ethical point he's making, that the infinite good is the only thing that the human will can be satisfied by mm-hmm. um, is required in order for any meaning in life uh, to, to be had. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that can give life meaning. It's not like the most important thing that gives life meaning. It's actually the only thing that sort of then gives meaning to all right. of life's it pursuits. Can, it, it, can, it can pass meaning down the chain. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, you know, you take a pen and you start, you start writing a shape on, on a piece of paper. And, and you think, you know, if you're watching this from the outside, you're, 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 it's unclear. What are, they, what are they doing? Are they just doodling nonsensically? And as you see it play out, you realize, oh, no, wait, they're writing a word. And, <laughs> and, and you, you sort of see the end for picking up the pen, for picking up the pen <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. what seemed to be meaningless is now understood as meaningful in light of, of where it was ultimately going. Right. And so then you, it's always retrospective. You look back whether temporally or metaphysically, you look back, once you see the end or the purpose, that informs all of those uh, initial activities that seems to be meaningless, but now they, they take on the, 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 the shimmer of, of meaning. This is, uh, uh, this is where Thomas, Thomas talks about the order of execution and the order of intention. And I, and I think that this is fitting right into that. The order of intention is actually first, even though the intention is the final end. In yeah. the order of execution, when you reach the final end, that happens yeah. temporarily last. Yeah. But you think about that before you do anything, right? Right, right, and right. So, so the order of intention looks to the end. Yeah. And then the order of execution begins at the beginning towards the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and then the second, we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving because um, I want to actually get into what we're talking about. I mean, this yeah. is this is jumping all around, um, Clark. So this is, we're not behind uh, <laughs> good as i've said the uh, the conductor can never be late for his own train <laughs> um, this is true okay so number three on page 36 the human intellect as capacity for being kapox entis is naturally ordered as to its adequate object to the whole of being as intelligible hence it can ultimately be satisfied only by knowing directly the infinite source and fullness of all being namely god so the human will is 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 this desire to 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 choose or to unite oneself through activity um, um, uh, to 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 the ultimate good. Whereas the intellect is this, I don't know if you wanted to call it an, an intellectual appetite or intellectual desire mm-hmm. to unite the mind, the understanding, to all being. Right. So and we talked about this um, in, in Aristotle. The idea of, of, of contemplation um, uh, and, and sort of the, 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 the passive intellect being sort of this potential for the contemplation of, of, of all, all, all essence. Um, here, here you have Clark making a very similar point. And the human intellect, even, even if you've, you've had a small little conversation with a child, uh, any child, doesn't matter, uh, and, and you, you're, you're with them, and they ask you a question, and you give them an answer. And then the, the next question that they ask is, why? Why? <laughs> and you say, well, because, and you give them another answer. And then the next question they ask is, why? Why? <laughs> and then you give them another answer. And then it just keeps going on until you, smart adult you are, realize 
you can't actually answer their question. <laughs> and so you say, no, 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 I, 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 uh, we, we've got to get to dinner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or things like that. Sometimes, sometimes it's not actually out of, out of in, in interest or in, inquiry that the child's asking the question. Usually it's out of manipulation. <laughs> but, but not always, not always. Usually that's when they get to like the age of like eight or <laughs> Ten or the somewhere there, the age of reason, right? Uh, right. So, in some sense, they're most rational before they hit that age. <laughs> but that's another story. Um, <laughs> so, oh, there, there the, go my kids playing the piano. You upstairs. might be able to hear the piano up there. Um, so, so, I, but I think I think that that is that's a drive that we we mm-hmm. have that when we we study something and we come to know, the more we come to know, the more we realize we don't know, and it's pushing us to. The infinite uh, uh, truth, the infinite our inf- our understanding of the infinite uh, itself, which we realize our finite stories of things doesn't fully capture it, and so we are looking with our with our intellect, so to speak, we're looking to the to to, to unite ourselves to that which. Um, Will 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 satisfy our understanding, and it's only a knowledge of that that is the infinite that will satisfy our understandings. Even if you know small, interesting things about how carbon moves and how um, uh, trees grow, mm-hmm. and and why this is happening and that's happening, you, that that's not going to fully satisfy you because there's even the question that that kids ask that that adults hate, which is. Um, so you can give it a story for why the sky is blue, and it has to do with like the refraction of the. <laughs> light through the water Spectrum droplets and, the, and, and, and the yada yada and yeah. you talk about the light rays and how it's you know refraction angles and what have you and then if the child's really sort of perceptive they'll they'll ask um but why does light refract that way through water yeah and if you're really smart and, and there's very few of us out there you can give a story about this yeah. but at some point you're just gonna have to say i don't know why carbon does what carbon does right I don't know why the fundamental particles do what the fundamental particles do because that's why they are fundamental. <laughs> right? So there's this question that, that we're, we're pushed to, which is why are the most basic things in creation the way they are? And that is a question that we realize that we don't have an account of, but yet we still sort of desire right. that. Yeah. And, we're and we're even, not happy with first principles being first principles. We want to have an explanation yeah. for first principles. And, and – um, I'll, there's there's this physicist, very famous physicist. Some of you, I'm sure, have heard of him, Richard Feynman, um, uh, who gives this explanation about magnets. He says, "Why do magnets do? Uh, why do magnets attract uh, each other? Like, why do they attract to each other?" And he says, "That's probably the hardest question that anyone can 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 answer." And and he he says, "Part of what is at stake is." Um, or, or as to why it's so hard is because you can only explain things in terms of a background which you understand. But when you get to the level of like the fundamental, that is the, the most basic background by which humans understand the world, you realize there's no more fundamental framework in which to make sense of that. Mm-hmm. So the, the problem is in fundamental uh, physics there is, n- n- in some ways, no way to understand it. And, and therefore, Feynman basically says, the only way you can understand it is in terms that really aren't too intelligible because you have to just push it into mathematics. Mm-hmm. And therefore, like you, 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 you sort of realize that that's not satisfying, <laughs> uh, but, but, but yet um, that's all you can do. And so he, he you know, beautifully points out that um, the, the human mind is, is sort of pushing to an understanding of something that it can't, mm-hmm. it can't have, it can't get. Mm-hmm. Um, and now what Clark is saying is that is a revelation. That that desire, intellectual desire, is a revelation of God. I mean, he, I don't think he says it explicitly, but he's basically saying that the dynamic movement of the mind towards its the knowledge of all truth is is this revelation of the infinite. There has to be, there has to be something that satisfies this desire and infinite truth or otherwise there is no meaningful secondary Mm -hmm. finite truths Mm -hmm. just as if there's no infinite goodness there is no finite goodness if there's no infinite end towards which you're trying to move your life in, in action 
then all of your actions in life are, are meaningless, right? Because mm-hmm. they're, they're not actually moving you towards anything. It's just you're sort of wandering aimlessly. Same thing intellectually. If there's not an infinite truth, then all the individual small and finite truths that you, you come to know in physics and chemistry ultimately aren't truths of anything because mm-hmm. there's, there's no infinite truth that, that these are sort of participating in or sort of moving you mm-hmm. to. Um, and so I think this is a really important point that he's basically saying the, the structure of the human person reveals to you the existence of God as perfect goodness and perfect um, um, intelligibility, perfect mm-hmm. truth. Perf- right. So, so I, I, I think he's saying the human being has written into his very nature the existence of God as, as infinite. Mm-hmm. And if you know yourself as striving for perfect goodness and striving for perfect knowledge or intelligibility, you will see God, right? I mean, or you'll, you'll come to see that there is, there must be a mm-hmm. God, right? Uh, so, so I think I didn't want to pass over that too quickly because this is a sort of practical, it's not really an argument, but it's a practical exercise to see that you already know God. Even even seeking truth at all, yeah. The, Any the, truth, the mere engaging of the question, "Does God exist?" reveals He must. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is this is all over uh, De Lubach's discovery of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, and interestingly, I mean, here he is again. I, I, I'm going to jump ahead. Yeah, a little ju- bit yeah, here. yeah. Jump Angelus. around, jump around. <laughs> Angelus Cilicius. Yes. Yeah. Qu- he, he quotes it. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going there right now. But this, uh, where did I first hear him um, in the yeah. Lubach's Discovery of God? Right. But Angelus Cilicius is quoted here. And, and, and I think you're, what you're pointing out, Dr. Jager, is very interesting because um, when, when he talks about this again later on, uh, Clark, that is, on page 46, he starts saying that the fact that we can – never actually know all things is a revelation of ourselves and it's revelation that we are a as he puts it a known unknown a mysterious Mm. abyss in which more remains unknown than known like the tip of an iceberg emerging above the water and how we have this desire to know to know the infinite and we know that there must be an infinite then and he quotes Angelus Cilicius, which I, I think this is the exact quote. Exact, exact God. same quote. Exact same quote. The abyss in man cries out to the abyss in God. Tell me which is deeper. And in this explanation that he gives of it later is is I think exactly what you were talking about, right? That next sentence is page forty seven near the bottom. Thus, our self awareness is a partial zone of light within us. When I read this, this is this is amazingly yeah. revelatory to me. A partial zone of light within us ever in fluid expansion or recession surrounded by a penumbra of shadow shading off into an at present impenetrable darkness and this impenetrable darkness is not the world although i think that's yeah. true too mm-hmm. yeah. but it's myself yeah. that he's talking about he's yeah. talking about self-awareness and the fact yeah. that when i look at myself and ask myself what do i know what am i what do i seek it's always a i it's kind of like this yeah. But there's much more that I don't know about myself right. than I do. And it's not just – it is talking about sort of the individual personality, who I am in a, right. in a unique particular yeah. way. But it's also talking about the nature of man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think because you don't know what it is to inquire into who you are or what you are, that is what makes it not possible – for you to come to know God, even though even though it's built into your nature, so to speak, but mm-hmm. but it's because you don't even know your own nature that that becomes something you're blinded to, right? Which that's and, and that's the paradox of man that it's built into my nature to know all things, but I can't know all things. But that doesn't right. it almost doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 and the reason the 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 reason these two go hand in hand, I think, was brought out on the same page, forty seven, at the bottom. Uh, uh, John Scotus, not John Dunn Scotus, John Scotus Erujina, uh, 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 Irish, I believe, an Irish um, theologian. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, great. I need to, I, this is another one of those guys that yeah. I need to learn more about. Uh, uh, he he um, quotes him: "God and man are paradigms of each other, 
-hmm. and Clark, Clark Commons. Both are ultimately ineffable. And this both because of their subjectivity and their inexhaustible depth. So if you don't understand that, that you, you have this sort of depth to you, which, which is um, um, your, your identity, your nature is not simply, oh, I'm a Chiefs fan and, and I'm a Raven and I'm a, and then you fill in a bunch of little like finite characterizations and you say, yeah. that's who I am. If you think that's who you are, then you're an atheist. <laughs> because that's, you, that's actually what. Yeah, kind of be, what because if, if you think that man can be characterized in a finite way, then you are saying the image of God, which you are, mm -hmm. is finite, mm -hmm. and therefore you don't uh, have the ability to actually see to see God because you don't know what it is to be man. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think for 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 modern man, this is especially problematic because. We're surrounded by uh, um, an economic structure. We're getting there. An economic structure mm -hmm. that um, makes man finite because it's infinitude that you can make profit. <laughs> you can, right? So, right. so we're, we're, we are, we're, we're, what it is to be um, human is to, I and mean, then you, 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 you package up a product right and right. and and then you you say this is this is my identity and you brand yourself with a particular um, logo logo yeah not logos not logos <laughs> but a, a particular logo which um, I, I think is uh, um, to cut it, each time you do that you're cutting yourself off from your true nature uh-huh Right, you're, uh -huh. you're saying if you're saying this is what I am, um, then you're, you're automatically saying I'm not this this ineffable mystery, this I'm ineffable not, depth. I don't have a cop box entus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, when you look at other people, you realize that they are nothing other than just a particular, um, um, uh, a discrete logo. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's nothing. There's nothing really deep or interesting or important or meaningful to my friend, my spouse, my child, other than, oh, they're a Chiefs fan. Yeah. They like yeah. Inya. And <laughs> kind of like Inya. I know. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but that does not define me. No, no, that doesn't define me. Right? And I think we like, to, we like to do this. We like to say, no, yeah, that, those are, that's, that's stuff that I like, but that doesn't define me. And, and then the question is, but what does define you? Right. What what does define you? And I think one of the things that that Clark seems to be suggesting is, um, it's ultimately God that defines you. And what, but what is that? It's the it's the ineffable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is why the definition of or the the man, as as um, um, Eruginio says, is the paradigm of God, and in, in that you know the the the, um, the ineffability of God is going to be what defines man ultimately so and and i think it's only in virtue of this that you can actually have a, a, a foundation for um human love that humans can actually love other humans without it being simply a um sort of a reduction to a mastery over something like consumerism I yeah a consumerism i can't i can't love a coffee mug um because the coffee mug oh, although actually we can take this back here in a bit um, because I think one of the things that's going on is all being is going to be right. this sort of infinite depth. Yeah. But but he's not worried about that here, and that might be a problem with Clark. But stick with what Clark's saying for the time being, and then we'll critique it a little bit in, in a bit. He's saying a coffee mug doesn't have that infinite depth that a human person has. Mm -hmm. um, with a human person, you realize they have a life of their own, uh, uh, a sort of a freedom and openness of their own such that what they are saying to you or, sh or sort of showing themselves to you as you realize, but that doesn't define them. That's mm -hmm. not, that's not, um, they're wearing a chief shirt, but there, there, there's more to that person than the chiefs. Right. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Right. And now, the, there the, is, there is, there has to be by right. nature of being, but, man. but, but the, but the worry, uh, I have is, 
Um, and this is actually happening now. When you rip these things away, you no longer have the ability to identify yourself as an NCAA you know, Final Four fan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you rip yourself away from your ability to you know, be a raven. Right. Uh, and you rip yourself away from you know, all these various logos uh, that, that you took to be what you are, who you are. You're now left in your room thinking, what is my life? What, what am I doing now? I'm not doing anything. I'm not, yeah. uh, there's like nothing for me left. Yeah. Right. And this is, and this is what leads people to despair is because when you rip away what consumerism has tried to define you as, there's nothing left over except this, this emptiness. Right. And now I think the hope is that you can recognize, but this emptiness is a revelation of what I am. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. I am this depth. I'm not chiefs. I am not right. hashtag ravens. <laughs> I'm more. I'm, right. It doesn't mean those aren't things that you don't like and that, that aren't like sort of secondary activities of you. But right. that's not your like nature. Yeah. Right? So next time you hear once a raven, always a raven say, but always more. But always <laughs> more. <laughs> Infinitely more. Did you see, by the way, uh, right where you ended reading, foot or end note, unfortunately, Demonic end note number thirty four. Um, he mentions um, a work by Thomas Thomasick, Ooh. and then also suggestive Ooh. work of Ferdinand oh. Ulrich. I did not notice Homo that. Abyssus. That's great. I did yeah. not notice. I that. cannot believe you didn't see that. That is. I'm great. glad that you're. I'm glad you're discovering this just now. Yeah. See, this is. I would have. I hate end notes. I hate end notes too. So, They're from the devil. They are. They are. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I, I think. Um, I think there's a very practical. Uh, I mean, in, in in all of in all of philosophy, all of being, there's always a practical. I mean, I mean, right. I mean, theory is is not theory unless it, it can right. sort of be, you know. Um, uh, it's always um, relevant. Yeah, yeah. It's right. always relevant. If it's not relevant, then it's then it, you're not really talking about being. Right, right, and I think. Uh, or you're making a separation between being and action. Being in action, contemplation and activity. That's false. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, great. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good stuff. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no questions, <laughs> we'll move on. We'll press <laughs> on. Uh, um, I mean, this his idea of providence in your own little corner of the universe. I found to be fascinating. Um, and the fact that man is an image of God, insofar so, as he is not bound to do anything. Yeah. Can, so, so just just to sort of put this in, in the broad structure of what yeah, the yeah. reading for today was. So he says, to be a human person is to be a self possessor, to possess yourself, um, and that comes in two ways: through self awareness and self determination. Mm -hmm. And we've been speaking about self determination mostly. Um, so we can keep doing that, but just to give you some indication, this is actually the second point he's making: um, is that we, we determine ourselves sort of through through our activities, through our will, um, and that's how we sort of possess ourselves. Who we are is is determined by what we do, mm -hmm. um, and and we have this freedom in what we do, and so we sort of have this freedom in in what we're possessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 he has this explanation, and and really the rest from from in the second part of the chapter from here on out, he's really just concerned with the fact that the human person is the buck stops there. Mm -hmm. It's it, it is where you are determining not only the world around you but yourself, right? And and this is uh, something mm -hmm. that he thinks is lost a little bit in in our modern metaphysics is this false sort of, uh, or this mistake where we don't see that our activity actually causes us to be what we are. And he actually points yeah. Carol Wojtyla right. as being the guy that points it out to him. Um, so that man is, um, as he as he says, um, I'm trying to find where he, where he talks about this specifically, but um, the responsibility of man for making himself Oh, this great quote from Sister Mary Clark. Right? Yeah. This is at the top of 55. 54 is where he talks about what he was. Yeah, yeah. 54 and 55. So top of 55, he says, that one determines oneself not only to act but also to be. Because there's always, and he uses this language of trace. No matter what you do, a trace 
in you is left behind because of that act. And, and you can't, um, I don't think you can really, um, I mean, outside, outside of like psychological, you know, disorder sort of like forgetting, uh, uh, I think you, you, and, but even then, we, uh, I don't think you can do this entirely. Yeah. Uh, because it's still your history, still mm -hmm. your, 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 still what you are, who you, who you were, even though if you don't remember it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think you have this, um, you, you do a actions and it, and it forms your character such that when you now think about what to do, you're going to be thinking about what to do in light of that action you, you did. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you do something, if you do something horrible, it's going to, um, always persist with you, even if you want to try to forget it, mm -hmm. it's going to persist with you. And you're either going to be acting in light of resistance to it because mm -hmm. you want to be better, or you're going to be acting in conformity to it because you're just a despicable person. Uh, <laughs> right. Either way, either way, that becomes a part of you, right? right. W whether, whether it becomes your sort of like negative, um, you know, who, who you're fighting against, your sort of alter ego in yourself mm -hmm. that you're, you're trying to fight against, or it becomes, you know, the, the, the character that you're, you're manifesting. It's just always carries, always carries with you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and you, you can't, you can't ever fully like uproot this. And this is sort of the, 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 the great weight of, of character, the great weight of action yeah. as, you know, forming your character, which is going to, just be, um, be you. Yeah, and I like how he he basically says, "Man, being an embodied spirit, right? And the, that materiality is 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 specifically human. It's not accidentally human, right? We're right. not we're not ghosts in a machine, right. or we're not transmigrated souls or something. Mm -hmm. And so he takes very seriously the historical becoming of man." And, and so he says, uh, 55 again, in a word, our personal identity in the existential order of action is inseparable from our story as a whole. That that man is a story, mm. right? Because he lives in the material historical reality of the world, yeah. the cosmos. And therefore, his, his story is his identity. It's not just something that happened yeah. to happen to you. Right. And, and then in light of what he said in chapter one, when person is understood and being is understood as relation then what you choose for your story is thereby ipso facto part of the story of everyone mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. so you you are not an isolated story right uh, so so you, the and this is the, so the activities that i do um yeah they might screw my life over and i say oh but they're not really going to affect my children right and my wife but but anyone that's ever you know talked to anything or talk to anyone that's um, gone to, to counseling, yeah. or talk to any sort of you know marriage uh, psychologist will realize that that uh, the the actions and the personality of an individual have radical consequences for the whole family, right? right. So so that if I become a loser, then those around me become losers are going to be at least, at least somewhat and losing they're going to <laughs> lose <laughs> yeah, they're going to lose in some aspect <laughs> right, right right yeah because that because because they they've, they've lost by being be in some sense although although uh um clark doesn't like this language as much in some sense they're constituted by their father yeah right um, although Clark is worried that that kind of language, this is page 58 that I'm thinking of, mm -hmm. that kind of language is going to sort of make the in itselfness of the person disappear yeah. if you concentrate on it yeah. too much. I was a little worried about this. this yeah, I was this too. Point. Um, I was too. I, I mean, I actually, I felt chastised um, in my sort of hyper relationality that, that I, you know, I, I do think that I fall more into the camp of Marcel. For yeah. example, yeah. that he that he kind of brought out as being a problem uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. in some sense, although he continually will say great things about the, the revelations that are made, right. the, the explanations. But but he he specifically says, and, and here I, I really read Kenneth Schmitz. I don't know if you did Kenneth Schmitz in this class or not, or if you're going to. No, no, okay. no, no. Um, too bad they should. Yeah. <laughs> but but this idea of being constituted by others is is his exact language. Uh, Schmitz is his exact yeah. language, and they're writing at the same time. So I'm wondering if he's kind of I mean I'm sure of so I'm sure I'm sure he because Schmitz and D.L. Schindler were 
um, I don't I don't know if they were at that at this time. I mean, I, I don't know about the history, but but they were at the bo- end. both both at the the institute right? uh-huh. and at the end. Yeah. And then um, Schindler critiques Clark uh-huh. in a very friendly way, and Clark actually takes. He takes agrees. takes the critique as as just and, and yeah. he sort of revises and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the revision he makes um, here in a bit but but I, I think I think there's um, Schmitz I think would would also um, sort of critique be, this part critique this point yeah yeah yeah, yeah so I think it's uh, I do think it's uh, something that was really kind of revelatory to me was this idea of awakening that man is because of his storiness yeah. his historical reality. He is, as he says in 59, uh, that he is an awakening into actuality of a potentiality or capacity already latent within the child's own being. Right. And he says the only way that this awakening can happen, fascinatingly, is is, is being elicited by another. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm sure, you know, uh, he, he mentioned earlier Balthazar being really important to him and the whole mother smile of Balthazar is is all about the fact that man comes to himself from the love of another right yeah yeah so i i want to return to that point because that's the that's the first aspect of the self-possession the self-awareness okay how do we become aware of ourselves how do we become aware of who we are what we are um that's a really important question when you think about how do you define yourself your your sort of your goals and what have you um we'll talk about that here in a bit but but just to finish up this this point of um the uh the Clark saying on page 58 that um, that we're not constituted by um, uh, what our relationships to others. I says for the uh, 58, this is, he's saying, some people might think this, that we're constituted by our relationships with others. For the child, this means by the initiative of, of other already constituted persons reaching out to it and calling it to personhood. So he says, it's kind of an interesting thing, but he, he doesn't think metaphysically, goes on, that this will work. Mm-hmm. Uh, we cannot literally bring into being another person that was not there before simply by relating to the thing that is there with attentive love. Try doing this with a rock, a tree, or a rattlesnake. <laughs> um, don't recommend the last one especially. <laughs> uh, but but I, I think what what he is 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 saying is that you you – um, you have to have some sort of in itselfness, some sort of substantiality before mm-hmm. you, before you can relate to it and awaken it uh, to 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 perfected personhood. But but he wants to, I think, say it's already got, it's already ha- has to be in some ways, uh, in some proto sense, a person yeah. before yeah. you can reach out to it. Yeah. Um, and and I think what um. Uh, maybe a problem with this is, um, but all creatures, all beings are ultimately given their in itselfness from another. So it's not that is this the Schindler. This critique? is the, this is this. I think this is the Schindler critique that okay. you um, you have uh, the act of creation. Creation itself is a relation that the creature has to the creator, mm-hmm. and so. Um, it's not as though you can have this being that's existing and then secondarily the the creator creates it because right. that's incoherent right because creation is the bringing forth of a being so even it, it's in itselfness is from another is yeah it's in itselfness is from another is relational and it doesn't it doesn't break down or reduce its in itselfness this is this because is it's from another this is Ulrich i think Clark maybe should have read Ulrich just a little bit. I mean, it wasn't translated. and I mean, he, I'm sure he read German very, very well. But okay, but, 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 but you got to read Ulrich twice. But right? you got to read Ulrich twice. <laughs> At least. Uh, but I, 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 I'm, I'm inclined to think that the in-itselfness, in virtue of a metaphysics of creation, uh-huh. must be from another. And this is this is also, a, and I, he, I, I think he should have seen this in light of the Trinity itself because the Trinity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of persons... Perfect persons, right? This is the this is the, the perfection of personhood. Right. 
which which you are, would say is the perfection of being because right yes yeah, he yeah. Says person are person being. person is the perfection of, of being yeah so therefore the perfection of persons that is the Trinity is the perfection of being yeah and and what you get with the Trinity is uh, the person is a, is a subsistent relation the yeah. person is the relation it's in itselfness is its, it's relationality it's from another and right. for another right and yeah. and so like perfect perfect substantiality or perfect in itselfness, um, perfect being per, per se yeah. is um, um, odd say, odd say, yeah, yeah, to in, another, yeah, odd in, say, in say, odd say, est odd say, in say, est odd say, et, um, uh, ob say, yeah, I think it's ob say, yeah. I think it's ob say, yeah. yeah, from another. This is you can get your uh, Cassell Latin dictionary out if that didn't make sense. I, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Ratzinger in his introduction to Christianity says all three of those. Yeah, if he doesn't, he meant to. He meant to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So he, so, was, he just wasn't being pretentious. So I think, I think, like I think Clark Clark <laughs> wasn't Clark wasn't thinking about the the metaphysics of creation, which is which is the the substantiality of being is only possible in light of the gift of 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 it from another. Right. So, so there's some, there's a like great thing that you can, you can have the creator, you can have God create beings that stand on their own. They're, they're, they're capable of having their, their own inner life, their own sort of inner principle of, mm-hmm. of being only by being given that. Right. But it's not a it's not a temporal giving, right? And and I it's mean, it's, it's not a temporal, giving, right. right? It's a perpetual, yeah. So it's it's, it's, it's an eternal it's a, it's a, um, um, it's, a, 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 it's it's persistence. It's um, um, creation, and it it it's uh, eternal. But was it? Uh, <laughs> I forget Eternalism. The, I forget the, no, I forget the technical term. Oh, I don't um, know. The, the continual creation. Oh, um, uh, um, subsequent? No, no, I don't know. Whatever, whatever. Um, but 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 I think in order to get both those. Um, Ulrich points out you, you have to, and the analogy that um, D. C. Schindler uses in his commentary on Ulrich is helpful, that you have to have the, so to speak, umbilical cord cut mm-hmm. between the creator and the creature. Otherwise, it's just it's just pure relationality and there's no in itselfness. Mm-hmm. So you have to have the relationality be a true gift, which is a letting go of of the, the the creature, so that it can stand on its own mm-hmm. metaphorically, mm-hmm. Uh, it can exist in itself. Um, it's kind of like um, the, the 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 child's relation to the, the parent. The child has its is, has its existence. It has its its history. Everything the child sort of is going to become in life is ultimately due to the parents, whether for good or ill. Um, that the, the parents are at least in, in this domain of of, of, of sort of thinking of this from the parents the child's existence the child's education formation character mm-hmm. ultimately mm-hmm. sort of is rooted in the parents but at the same time if the parent is doing the good parent thing the parent's going to l- let the child live its own life the, the point is that the, the parent is trying to give a life to the child such that the child can live its own life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think what what you have in in, generically in, in metaphysics is that's that's what it is to be a person it's to be given a life which you can live on sort of on your own for another right. the fascinating thing though is that uh, when you give that and and, and and I think this is where he kind of talks about the image of God when you give the child to live its own life you give the child to live its own life from your own life so what you are your history is bound up in the child who is in some sense making their history but in some sense is only able to make their history from the fact that they've come from your history and therefore their history is always colored by your history and just like my history is always co- colored by my parents history and their right. parents and their parents history colors them and right. so this goes back to this whole connectivity and, of all pers- person person right. right and and i i think a problem or concern that that we have or that at least i have is People that try to deny that, to think right. that my, my identity, like I am trying to live my own life and I don't want to to have my parents, 
those overbearing jerks. Yeah. You know, be be in control of my life. But I think I knew someone uh, uh, in grad school who kept more than I ever did, even though, like, my parents were, were great, you know, formative individuals for me. And I, and I think that the only reason I'm the person I am today is because of them. Yeah. Um, but I don't constantly talk about them because they're sort of like in the in the in the paint of my life. Yeah, in your um, way of being. Um, but there was this there was this friend of mine in, in grad school that would routinely talk about his his parents and how like horrible they were and how they're like you know foolish Christians and uh-huh. and yada, yada. and and it's just every conversation I had with this guy, especially after he had a lot of beers, uh, <laughs> it would always come up. It would yeah. always come up, and yeah. he was always sort of living his life trying to distance himself from his parents but because that was his modus operandi that was his sort of way of being in the world his parents were were more sort of central yeah. to his to life his being uh, right uh, it's just yeah. he just it was it was in the in the in the mode of hate right uh, but nonetheless still still there the, the the and 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 I think that the problem that people want to do and this i think this is this is a nihilistic tendency mm-hmm. to say i just want to be truly me mm-hmm. i want to get to the pure me yeah but that's to, like pure nature and to do that and to do that you have to carve out all the things that are external to you right um and 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 um i think if you try to do that try to carve out everything that's external to you um then you're carving out your history and you're even carving out if if um uh, um, if Clark and and specifically um, um, Schindler and Ulrich and but basically probably just any any metaphysician Christian metaphysician to carve out things that are in some sense external to you, you're going to be carving out the the gift of creation, the gift of being, mm-hmm. your own being, mm-hmm. which in some ways is in it, it's like more you than you are yourself, but it's right. only because of it being given to you. Right. So, so right. like, like everything, your very existence in some ways has been given to you. Yeah. Um, and so and I you think can't, you can't carve it out without leaving nothing. Right. Which maybe gets back to the point of, are we constituted by our relations? Right. And I, I, and that's why I kind of want to say we are, but that's, that's not at opposition. That's not an opposition to our, our in itself. Which, which is kind of maybe my one problem with Clark is I think that maybe he's taking the premise of the distinction between in itselfness and relationality as being separate realities that insofar as one is in itself, it is not in relation. And I, and I, 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 I don't think he wants to do that, but I'm worried that his sort of fighting against the personalists and the phenomenologists that he is actually assuming a premise that I'm not sure that the phenomenologists would assume that insofar as you are in relation, you are not in yourself. I don't think that's true, especially if we go back to the Trinitarian understanding of subsistent relation. Right, right, right. And it, it, it pains me to say this, but uh, we are out of time. <laughs> so with the notion of pain on your mind, 